Can AI make art? I don't know, actually. I have friends who can make art. I like to think I can make art. But the fact is, most of us can't even agree on what art is. So recently, I got the itch to try my hand at developing a game. Now, the dev side of game dev has never really been my strong suit. I actually thrive a lot more in the art and design side of things. But this time around, I was feeling a little uninspired. I just did not want to have to go to all the work of designing characters and levels and making all the art for this. So I started thinking, what if I just make an AI, train it on a ton of pixel art, and have it make the art for me? So I present to you, AI pixel art. Now what kind of art can an AI come up with? I've seen neural networks that generate faces, that generate numbers. I've seen neural networks that make existing photos look like art. But in all of the low res images that people have been generating with AI, you mean to tell me that nobody has stopped to think, why not make images that are supposed to be low res in the first place? Now I'm sure somebody has done it, but I haven't seen it. So I'm gonna do it. Now the hardest part about any kind of project like this is finding the data for your AI to train on. Thankfully, I was able to find a decent number of 32 by 32 images that all shared the same style, and there were about 1800 of them, so this was enough for me to go on. Now by far the best way to handle a task like this is with something called a GAN, or Generative Adversarial Network. Essentially you can think of this like two miniature AI battling it out to the death over who has a better idea of what pixel art should look like. So on the one hand, you have your generator network, which is like your friend who always has ideas on what you should do, and none of them are ever good. Then you have your discriminator network, which is like the friend who always has a reason for why those ideas are bad, why you shouldn't do them, but never actually has any suggestions or ideas of their own. So the theory is, if you stick both of these friends in a room for long enough, that eventually they'll emerge with an idea that's actually good. So I tried it out on my MacBook, just as sort of a proof of concept to see if this idea would work. And these were my first results. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. So I used the tried and true method of give it more time. And here's what I got. Not bad, that's a start. But training an AI on a MacBook is just a horrible experience. It is not fast enough and it does not have enough power to do something like this. So I built a PC with more power and I put it in an NES. And now we were cruising again. So after training the AI for around 10,000 epochs, here's what it came out with. There are a lot of shapes that you can make out that look like some kind of character from an RPG, but it keeps getting confused on colors, and then the shapes can be a little blob-like. I think a lot of this is due to the fact that some of the pixel art in this is very humanoid, and then some of it is totally different and just like a blob. And the AI, I think, is getting a little confused on the difference between these two. Now, if I wanted to, I could create separate classes for humanoid versus other, and that would split it out, and it would probably do a little better job at making the right kind of shapes. The problem is, 1800 images is not really enough to train an AI in the first place, and narrowing it down further makes it even more difficult for it to train. This is something called the curse of dimensionality. Essentially, when you have so many different dimensions and so many different criteria to define something, it narrows it down to not enough examples of that. In this case, if we narrowed it down by type of character, you would have so few images in each of those folders for it to train on that it can't draw anything meaningful out of that. That's an issue that you run into with AI a lot, and it's kind of this catch-22 of, do I want my AI to be able to give me really specific, accurate results, or do I want to be able to work with a smaller data set and have my AI be a little more general in what it's able to accomplish? In this case, I just kept it general. Now, there are a couple different methods for helping a network like this overcome a small data set because a common issue that can happen is that your discriminator gets so good at recognizing what 
is in the data set versus what is being generated, that it makes it impossible for the generator to improve at all. And then at that point, the generator kind of gives up because it's not getting any feedback. So I was thinking about some of the issues with that data set that I was using. And a big issue there is just the large variety of shapes with it. And so I looked for a data set that might be a little bit more uniform. And I found a data set made up of all the different Pokemon in a rounded style. So this will make it easier for the generator to catch on to what it should be doing. So it's a simpler data set with a lot less variety. So I think it should be a lot easier to keep the neural network from getting confused. After giving it some time to train, I took a look at what it came up with. And most of what I got was endless abominations. But it also had some interesting creations. It really seemed to like making images that looked a lot like Pikachu. There's Pugachu, Surprise Pikachu, Horribly Deformed Pikachu, and Chipmunk Pikachu. But the most surprising thing to me is that it actually came up with some original creations. There's a blue alien with hair, a toothy turnip, and lastly, my favorite creation, this moldy cat with a hat smoking a cig. I don't know why, but this one really got me. It actually inspired me. I started thinking about the backstory of this cat. Who is he? Where does he come from? He looks like some kind of hardened detective who's seen some messed up stuff in his time. Is he blind in one eye? Or is that just some sort of modification to improve his vision? Also, why does he have a mossy beard? Where does that come from? My mind was just firing off with all these different ideas on who this cat could be, and nobody came up with him. In a way, he doesn't even exist. No artist created him. And this was the part that was so fascinating to me. I was inspired by an AI that I trained. I didn't expect that. And I know the meaning I ascribed to that image is not what the AI intended. It doesn't understand what a cat or a hat is. All it was doing was just trying to output something that was essentially the sum of everything it had seen. And all the originality and unique variations I was getting was just the result of it taking in raw visual data and trying to compress that into layers of abstraction and then back into raw visual data again. But that's exactly what we do. We take in visual data and codify it into layers of abstraction in our brains and then use those layers of abstraction to change it back into visual data again. The only difference is we have access to way more neurological functions than just a discriminator and a generator. And we also have access to way more data. So can it create? In a sense, I guess it can. The main argument for why it isn't creating art is that it doesn't understand what it's creating. But is that required for something to be art? Does an artist have to understand what they're making just for them to be artists? I don't think so. In my opinion, art doesn't require comprehension to be art. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to leave a like, and if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.